What's up guys, Tea Party Piercy here and welcome back to the first Blue Protocol content in-depth guide. In my last few review videos, I went through all the contents which I was able to play in the alpha briefly. And as I promised in those videos, starting with this video, I'm going to explain each of those contents a little bit more in detail. So this one is going to be about the skills in Blue Protocol. Before we start, a few infos first. I can't use any in-game footage, that's why you will see soon my amazing pain skills. I will also upload those images and link it in the description down below. And the last info is about the Blue Protocol English database, which I mentioned in my previous video. It's currently on a maintenance and is down because the admins are changing the host and redesigning it a little bit. Any updates about the database can be also found in the Blue Protocol Discord or subreddit link down below. Now, let's start with the main topic of this video, skills in Blue Protocol. Ta-da! I know my pain skills are bad, but I hope it's not terrible. Let's start at the top, you can see the key bindings of the two skill categories. The first category is the class skills. I won't go through all the skills of each of those four class in this video, but you can find all the skills translated in the Discord class channels or in the database. For most of the classes, the left mouse button skill has no cooldown and is a chain attack. The last hit of the chain attack has usually an additional effect, which is different for each of those classes. The right mouse button, Q, E and R keys belong to the class specific skills which are totally different for each of those four classes. Now let's talk about the more interesting skills which are bound to the key C. This skill can be split into two parts. First part is self buff. Aegis Fighter's block won't consume endurance and will reduce cooldown of his skills. Twin Fighter will be CC immune. Blast Archer will get reduced charging time and aggro for all her skills. And finally Spellcaster will recover mana over time and also get reduced aggro. The second part of the C skill is actually the most important part for party content, like dungeons and world boss fights. That is the party buff. Aegis Fighter will reduce the damage taken, Twin Striker will increase the damage deal, Blast Archer will reduce the cooldown of the normal skills and Spellcast will reduce the cooldown of the ultimate skills for everyone in the party. As you know, the max party size is 6, which means you will have some party buffs multiple times. Depending on which classes you have more than once in your party, it can make your party more damage, defense or survival focused. Moving on, we have the V skill, which is always a healing related skill, but it doesn't have to be a party heal. For example, the Twin Fighter's V skill is a life leech buff only for himself. And last but not least, we have the ultimate skill, which deals tons of damage and has sometimes a few additional effects. By following the green arrow to the right on the image, the next thing I want to explain is about skills and stat modification. You can equip up to 3 of those modifications in total and can change it as long as you are not in combat. You don't have to be in a city and you also don't need to pay any in-game currencies to change the modifications. And as you can read, you unlock those by leveling your class. Let us first focus on the class skill modifications, which will modify a certain skill. As you can read, it can reduce cooldown, charging time or increase effectiveness, duration or range of a certain skill. You can't choose a modification for a certain skill, because it is already predetermined. For example, the modification of the heal skill for Aegis Fighter is increased effectiveness. Next we have the stats modification. I'm just gonna call it like that even if not all the modification listed below are stats related. But those modifications can increase one of your main stats or boost one of the utility skills like dodge or revive speed. To sum it up, depending on the combination of skill and stat modifications equipped, you can customize your class and focus on DPS, tank, support or hybrid build. Here again an example. I prefer to slot HP, defense and stamina modification to survive solo, but for party play I used HP increase, heal effectiveness and increased endurance, which is a hybrid tank support build. 
On the second page, we have the combat souls. I will only focus in this video on the skill aspect of the combat souls and not the stat increase aspect, which I will explain in another video. You can slot up to two combat souls and similar to the modification, you can change those as long as you are not in combat and your combat soul skills are not in cooldown. Every combat soul will unlock a specific skill. In addition to that, as a passive effect, it will also increase your main stats. The combat souls can be also divided into two categories. First, we have the normal souls, which will increase two of your main stats. Different souls will increase a different combination of your stats. For example, the soul of a normal fox increases strength and stamina, and the bandit soul increases stamina and dex. The normal souls can be obtained through quests as a very rare drop from normal monsters in the zone or in the dungeon, and with increased chance from quick time event mobs. The active skill which you get by equipping a normal monster soul has a decent cooldown time, mediocre damage and often a skill shot related skill with low range. The boss soul on the other side increases three of your main stats and can be only obtained from dungeon bosses. I'm not sure if a world boss can also drop their soul. But if it's possible, it will be at least as strong as a boss soul from a dungeon or maybe even belong to a higher tier of souls. The boss soul has a pretty long cooldown but deals high damage in a bigger area than a normal soul. And of course those souls are not easy to get, which makes sense after knowing how much stronger they are compared to a normal soul. So that's it for today's video. I hope it was helpful and if you liked it, leave a like and subscribe if you don't want to miss any videos related to Blue Protocol, Lost Ark or Ascent Infinite Realm. And of course, you can join the subreddit or discord link down below to be up to date. Thanks for watching, see you guys in the next video, bye bye, your Tea Party Percy.